that, uh, I didn't know of that song, Tell Your Heart to Beat Again. And it was sung, first of all, by, it became very well known by Danny Gokey, who was on American Idol. I don't know what year that was. <clears throat> and the song actually is telling us about someone who had some challenges and who's been through a tough time and has basically felt that they have lost themselves. So it's a song of hope. However, and, and so the chorus is encouraging us to move on because what has been is in the past and that there is new life in front of us. However, there's more to this story than you know. And <clears throat> there was, the story goes that there was a pastor who had a heart surgeon as a congregant. And this pastor in Ohio was very excited about doing all kinds of adventures. And he really, really wanted to see heart, open heart surgery. Okay, I, I'd pass on that, but uh, he wanted to do that. And his, his, uh, his congregant, the heart surgeon, said, okay, I've got an open heart surgery. This woman's heart is not working, Miss Johnson. And <clears throat> so he went in and he, you know, opened up the chest cavity, removed the heart, the, cat, the uh, surgeon, repaired the heart, and then put it back in, and then gave it a little massage, and it's supposed to just start to beat. Well, it didn't. And so he gave it a little, little rub, and it still didn't beat. And he tried a third time a little more aggressively. And then he did something that was pretty unknown in the medical profession. He took off his mask. He got down on his knees. He whispered in Miss Johnson's ear, and he said, Miss Johnson, your heart has been repaired. It's perfect. You need to be in agreement. Tell your heart to beat again. When he said that, the heart started to beat. And just... So there, like I said, there was more to that story um, than you might have known from the get-go. So again, her heart was perfect, but the key was she had to come into agreement. She had to come into agreement with that. So <clears throat> the song is about overcoming our challenges and basically um, getting back into the life, because beat again means it used to be, your heart used to beat. Well, your life used to be maybe better than before the challenge that you are facing in your life. So it's about coming back to a greater experience and expression of life. So today's talk is entitled, What Needs to Be Healed? <clears throat> so uh, how many of you know of someone or have something in your own life that you would like to have healed? Oh, gosh, I'm going to see everybody's hand. It's amazing. Yes, we all have. And so what I'd like to find out from you, and you're free to call this out, what are some of the things that you would like you or your uh, a friend or someone you know like to have healed? Call them out. Loneliness. Loneliness. Heartbreak. Heartbreak. Loss. It's good. What type of health? Being able to get up, right? My, I was just thinking heart condition, you know? People have heart conditions. What? <laughs> Rheumatoid uh, arthritis. There's forms of cancer, illness, diagnosed diseases. There's various places... You know, wherever we experience pain in our body, right, or in our life, and I like that you called out loneliness because maybe we want to have a relationship that is restored and renewed, okay, for where there's conflict in the world even. Uh, how about peace and uh, restoring your relationship with finances and prosperity and money and healing anything because we teach something called Consciousness. In fact, our, our mission statement is to raise consciousness. And when we raise our consciousness, we heal our lives and we transform, um, we transform the lives and, and we heal the earth one person at a time. So healing 
is actually about coming back to. And I actually believe that the definition of healing is bringing back our sense of, se our sense of separation from the divine. Because we're made in the image and likeness of great spirit. And the question is, does great spirit get disease and illness? And what's that about? And how incongruent if I'm a divine being, why do I have carpal tunnel, right? Why do I have a thing in my knee that had to be repaired? So I like the words uh, sense of separation. Because what I believe is that we uh, have a sense of separation. Maybe we don't believe that we're 100% the divine in expression. We say, we teach the principles, everything is spirit. However, we don't, I don't think we buy it 100%. So we have all these things that need to perhaps be healed. And again, SOS. SOS, sense of separation from our true nature, which is wholeness, is health and well-being. Healing, the definition is the process of making whole again, to make whole or sound, bringing together aspects of yourself, the mind, body, towards integration, balance, and wholeness. So it's bringing things back together, restore and renew our bodies. So what is wholeness? Because we hear the word wholeness a lot in, um, in our teachings. When, we, when you say to me, Tom, I'd like to have something healed. Well, what you're actually, uh, what I get to know for you is that I'm not looking at you needing to have a healing or there needs to be a healing happening. It's a revealing. That's not about healing. It's about revealing the truth, the spiritual truth of who we are. And so to not focus on the healing is to focus on the wholeness, already perfect, whole, and complete. And that's not easy to do when you're in pain, right? That's why we have prayer chaplains and practitioners, because they get to know for you the truth. Because when I'm in pain, I don't know that this wrist of mine with this uh, diagnosis of carpal tunnel is absolutely perfect. But Tom can know it for me. Jeannie can know it for me. They can go, nah, it's actually perfect. Now, I, I may not believe them. Mary Morrissey talks about in Prosperity Plus when she had um, neuropathy of both kidneys. And she was a teenager. She had just had a baby. And she was an unwed mother. And she was, this is back in the 60s, a lot of shame. So she's in the hospital, and they're basically saying she only had six months to live. <clears throat> she had a chaplain come in and say, can I pray with you? And she said, I guess. I, she was scared to death, right? They were going to operate on the kidneys. And the lady said, what's going on with you? And she mentioned her pregnancy, the shame, her parents being, you know, shame, the, all the shame. And the chaplain said to her, do you believe that what you think about and what you feel could perhaps have caused the neuropathy in your kidneys? She goes, well, I guess. She goes, now, do you believe that the mind that created that or helped support that uh, condition could be reversed? And Mary's like, no, no, I, I can't, I, I can't buy that. And then the chaplain said, can you believe in my belief? Mary goes, well, I guess. So Mary believed that this lady believed that it could happen. And sure enough, she went in the next morning and one of the kidneys got removed. But the other one, they didn't find signs of the neuropathy because part of the prayer was all the shame was going to go into one kidney. So they removed it. Now she's out teaching, and that's what started her on her path of trying to figure out how did this happen. I had no intention on telling you that story, but I'm not in charge of what I tell you. So, so I wanted you to know there's a book called How to Pray Without Talking to God by Linda, Reverend Linda Martella Witset. Highly recommend this book. In chapter six, 
And I know we have a chapter six she has. It is about the prayer of wholeness. So what is wholeness? It's containing all the components. It's complete. There's nothing missing. It's not divided or disjointed. It's in one unit. So there's nothing missing. And what I know is whenever there's pain in my body or pain anywhere in a relationship, pain because I don't have maybe the financial abundance, whenever there's pain, actually pain is a gift because it's telling me that something is out of alignment. Yeah, and the phone call confirms it. So, so something is out of alignment, and usually it is my thinking that needs to be realigned with the truth of who I am, because the truth sets us free. So she talks about wholeness. Can you, uh, just maybe, there you go. I don't know who has got the phone going, but thank you. God's calling. Don't leave a message. So Jesus, great healer, right? He had a lot of demonstrations of healing. In moments when Jesus called forth wholeness in people who were asking for healing, he said, you are made whole. Now, common interpretation of this statement leads us to say that Jesus healed those people. Perhaps instead, Jesus reminded his listeners of the truth. Chances are, that Jesus was not saying, you were sick and now I healed you. He said, you are made from wholeness. You've never been anything less than whole. Your wholeness is your true nature. You are made whole. You are already whole. How many people did Jesus uh, heal? Zip. Zero. Did he see the condition? Yeah. Yeah. But he saw past it because he said, I want to see the truth. There is a piece in here where the ath, ath, atharva, I might have mispronounced it, Veda, in Hindu script, reports that this definition of wholeness, undivided I am, undivided my soul, undivided my sight, undivided my hearing, and it goes on. Now, the word undivided makes me see the word divided. So I prefer the word united because I don't even have an idea of divided because it's not in this sentence. So united I am, united my soul, united I am one, united I am whole. So I'm going to say these lines and ask that you repeat after me. United I am. <laughs> united my soul. United, my soul. United, I'm one. United, I'm one. United, I'm whole. United, I'm whole. You're whole, perfect, and complete. Do you believe that 100%? Mm. I know, right? But this is part of the reason why we come here to go, is that what I'm supposed to be thinking about myself? And uh, it's about our wholeness. Again, changing our consciousness, restoring that sense of separation. It's not healing, it's revealing your wholeness, your divine perfection. That's what I want you to take with you today. It's not about healing, it's revealing the divine perfection in me and as me, in every cell of my body. I'll talk more about ways that you can work with this consciousness. In the science of mind teaching, which is basically the same as unity for all intents and purposes, Ernest Holmes writes in his book, Living the Science of Mind, Seeing Perfection. When Jesus said to the man, stretch forth thy hand, he undoubtedly saw a perfect hand. If everything is mental, and if Jesus saw an imperfect hand instead of a perfect one, no good would have resulted. From what we know, Jesus must have only seen a perfect hand. Even though he might have recognized the false condition, it's not that you don't see that it may not. It's the false condition is what it's called. As far as the world 
word of healing was concerned, it had to come from that recognition that there was perfection there, else it could not have been healed. Healing is not creating a perfect idea or a perfect body. Okay? It's not about creating a perfect body. It is revealing an idea which is already perfect. Healing is not a process. It's a revelation. Okay. When you look in the mirror today, I want you to say, you're perfect, whole, and complete. I don't care what it looks like, right? Seriously, I'm telling you, because this has got to start here. Healing starts in our minds. Through this thought of the practitioner to the thought of the person having the problem. There may be a process in healing, but not a process of healing. Sounds like the same thing. There is a process of healing, which is just revealing and not a process in. And what that basically is saying is that could we be instantaneously healed? The answer is yes, but the process is more like how long did it take me to totally 100% accept that that is the truth of me or to accept the belief that Janie knows that I'm perfect, whole, and complete. It's about what we do in here. Now, I want to talk to you just a second about this thing called curing and healing. There is a difference to cure and to heal. Curing means that there is a banishment of the physical illness or disease. It's removed, all evidence. So that's what a cure is. And that's what most doctors are here to do. The doctors, the MDs, minor deities, right? <laughs> Just say, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, so the, where was I? Healing, on the other hand, is about restoring and coming back into wholeness. And that is mind, body, and spirit. Sometimes you can have a cure, the disease, the, the ailment goes away, but that doesn't mean that it was healed. It hasn't been. So I want to align my mind, my body, and my spirit to the truth. Sometimes there will be a healing, but no cure. And we talk about how everything is uh, brought forth by consciousness. That's a hard one to swallow in my mind because you're going, I would not have created this for myself. That person would not have created that for themselves. It's not about what has been created. It's about what do we do with it? Because I don't know what your life journey is going to be. What My wife passed of stage four lymphoma back in last year in December. Now, did she create that? Did what was that about? Yeah, I've been questioning. I think about it a lot. And at the same time, I don't know what the soul's journey is. Maybe the soul subconsciously on another level said, it's, I, I've done what I came here to do and to be, and now I'm moving on. Because we believe that life is eternal. So how many of you know of Myrtle Fillmore's story? Yeah, mo many of you do. Well, Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, she was sickly as a child and as a young adult suffered from tuberculosis. She was at a lecture in Chicago by E.B. Weeks in 1886, and she took in this idea about her innate divine nature. And the one statement that she came up with was, I am a child of God. I do not inherit sickness. I am a child of God. I do not inherit sickness. She took that. She didn't just take it in one ear and out the other. No, it landed. And she said, okay, I am going to believe this 100%. And so she continually said, those words to herself, and then she also did other talking to her body. She realized that her body was divine intelligence, and it just needed maybe some extra love or some direction. She apologized to her body. She gave it love mentally and 
in the story of unity by uh, James Dillett Freeman, he says, in one hour, Myrtle Fillmore's whole outlook toward herself and her life had been changed. Like a revelation. There was that word again. This simple and divine idea that she was a beloved child of God, that God's will for her could only be perfect life and wholeness, filled her mind and possessed her being. I want to be possessed with that thought. How about you? I mean, if you're going to be possessed by something, it might as well be I'm a child of God and I do not inherit sickness. Mm -hmm. The old belief that she was an invalid, that she had been born to be an invalid, was as waters passed away in two years. Now, it didn't happen instantaneously. There was a process of this revealing, not a healing. In two years, no longer sick or an invalid. Through her prayers, she was made completely whole. Prayers are just those positive thoughts of truth. After her healing, many people came to know about it. Many neighbors who had seen that she was sick saw the change and was curious about how this change happened. So they came to her for help. Eventually, she and her husband, who also doubted that this was something but saw the results, he actually had a leg that had been injured as a child lengthen because of what he was doing with his consciousness. So that's how unity started. It started with silent unity where people could call in and we could know the truth of and for you. Myrtle lived to be 86 years young, making her transition in 1931. Speaking of unity worldwide, this coming, you saw in the announcements that there's a unity world day of prayer this Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central time. That is something to pay attention to at Central time. So they're having, and it's focused on healing. Perfect timing. That's part of the reason I did the talk on healing today was because I knew that was coming up and I wanted to maybe uh, till the soil and then you can go into that. And it's also on Thursday, I think at 10 a.m. Again, it's, it's central time. You can check all that out on our website by registering or going Google World Unity Day of Prayer. So it's consciousness. Now, have you ever wondered why it is that we have ailments and disease? Yes? No? <laughs> okay, so it's, um, we teach actually affirmative prayer, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a bit. There's two reasons why I believe that we have disease, illness in the world. The first is We've been brainwashed. Oh, yep. Because, in Don Miguel Ruiz says domesticated. We have been conditioned. We're born babies. We don't know anything about sickness. It's not even a concept. But we're told, hey, you get old, you're going to have this problem and this problem and this problem. It's, it's a collective race consciousness, which means that basically everybody understands that you know, these are just normal things to have illness or disease. It's just part of the thing called life. True and not true. You know, I don't know. But we see, we, we bought it. We didn't know to question it. I'm pretty much domesticated with the fact that carpal tunnel is a thing. And it's been created. Now, could I work on this so that it no longer was without having surgery or other things? I suppose I could. You know, I believe I could, to be honest. Now, do I want to wait long enough for my consciousness to catch up? That's another question. I might choose to have the minor deities work on it, but I'll be praying about those minor deities doing the good work because there's nothing wrong with having doctors. That's part of the reason why science of mind became science of mind and not Christian science, because we do believe that doctors have a role to play. Anyway, so um, the other reason, besides being brainwashed and not questioning what's going on and why we're having this, <laughs> I like this one. It's called spiritual amnesia. Oh, I have amnesia too? Well, not in truth. 
She says, when we forget our essential wholeness, we take on an only human consciousness. I'm just human. You know, these things happen. That only human consciousness. And that's when we perceive there is something wrong with us. Something wrong consciousness brings about our sense of separation. I think I heard that earlier. The sense of separation from divine nature and our divine identity. Perceiving ourselves as separate, we begin to feel vulnerable to an onslaught of unwanted human conditions. Breathe. A something wrong consciousness is not a reality, but a limited perception. A consciousness of separation is not a truth, but a choice. Consciousness is pivotal, which means you can be have one belief, and a lot of our beliefs, you may know or not know, are on a subconscious level. Things that happen to us perhaps as children come along and we somehow come up with a belief that may not even be true. Jesus said, it is done unto you as you believe. Maybe not your conscious belief, but your subconscious belief is going to rule the us more. So that's part of the work I do as a spiritual counselor is I work with people to go, what is that belief that's underneath the surface and bring it to the light and go, that's not even true. And then we can replace that thought with something that is true. And we can create new grooves in our brain with repetition on our new beliefs. I'm going to share with you this story about Cynthia Rose Young um, in October 2002. This was published by The Healing Cancer Naturally. She says, many years ago, my grandfather on my mother's, on my father's side was in a position of her, the grandmother had spread, can, had cancer everywhere in her body. And she was only given three to six months to live. Knowing her end was near, she found the courage to stand up to my grandfather who was very controlling and a stern man, and she refused to let him control her any longer. My grandfather had prohibited music and dancing, and when she learned that she was going to die, she defied him, saying that he couldn't tell a dying woman what to do. They wanted to take her leg off to extend her life. She told them that if she only had less than a year to live, that she wanted her leg during that time, and she walked out of the doctor's office, went to the store, and bought a record player and lots of Elvis Presley records. <laughs> and she went home and played them and danced and danced and danced, something he had strictly forbidden. She then went to the old folks' home and played hymns for them on their old piano, another thing that had been forbidden. My grandmother loved Elvis so much. Well, you know it. She got better and better and better. She got well. Completely. It all went into remission. She outlived all my other grandparents, living for another 20 years, dying finally of a heart attack. And so that's just the story. There are so many stories about remissions, but it's what we do with this. So I'm going to give you some tidbits about how to change your consciousness. It's about having a consciousness of whole, wholeness. Okay, I've already told you that uh, go to the World Day of Prayers. Sign up for a monthly prayer practitioner. We have a sign-up sheet. You can get prayer from one of our prayer practitioners once a month. It's like a, a routine keeping yourself going in a good way. Even when things aren't going good, I want to just have you knowing the truth of me for me. It's like preventative medicine. You know, you go to the doctor for an illness or an ailment or something, and they'll give you a prescription and instructions about how to, you know, support the healing. But we're more than physical bodies. We're mind. We have a mind. And it's not just the brain. 
the mind is the power and presence of the divine within us. And so how about getting a spiritual treatment plan? Get a spiritual treatment plan. That means you're going to maybe do visualizations, get prayer, do meditation. Imagine every cell of your body with a smiley face filled with light, right? I mean, honestly, I'm just saying, you can also write a letter to your body and ask it, what is its message? I have a workshop. I do <clears throat> loving your body. Ask your body what it wants you to know. What does it need? Then you really want to get into it. Put the pen in the non-dominant hand and chicken scratch your answer back because it goes to the other side of your brain, the right brain. So these are a couple of ways to find out. I've, had, I've done this. I've actually found things about what my body was trying to tell me. I won't go into the story because well, we'll never get out of here. Um, educate yourself. Get the book, How to Pray Without Talking to God. Get the book by Joel Goldsmith, The Art of Spiritual Healing. Louise Hay, You Can Heal Your Life. Get a book. This is going to help put ideas of truth into your mind. And that's what I want to be digesting in my mind as new thoughts about the truth of how this world works. There's also, out on the counter, Unity had these books, and it's called The Heart of Healing. And um, they're little vignettes. There's 32 of them. But it also takes Karen Drucker's uh, music, and uh, Karen Drucker, love her, but she's actually got a CD called The Heart of Healing. And the healing song, she says, joy fills every... No, I'm not going to sing it. That's... <laughs> Not a good idea. Joy fills every cell of my body. Every cell is fill, um, alive with joy. I relax until the healing presence. I relax and let spirit do what it does. That is in here. So these are available. They're out on the counter for love donation or just take them. They're free. I just want you to have this. So it's consciousness, wholeness, perfect, whole, and complete. It's about revealing your perfection. You're perfect, and you didn't even know it. I want you to say it. I'm perfect. I'm perfect. I know it now. I need to believe it. Because I am perfect. Always been. Always will be. And so it is. May the revealing begin. Thank mm -hmm. you.